Every human being is created with a predisposition, a fitrah. And this fitrah is found whether the person is a Muslim, a non-Muslim, whether this person is a child or an elderly person, Allah has created in each and every one of us a fitrah. What is a fitrah? The fitrah is the equivalent of, you know, when you have a phone and it has default status, you know, when you do a factory reset and it comes back to its original settings, those original settings in us human beings is known as the fitrah. It is pure, it is pristine, it cannot be adulterated. However, it can be muddied and destroyed when we engage in things that are wrong. And the ulama, they explain that our lives, our inclinations, our desires are on a spectrum. One spectrum all the way on the right is what we call the malaika, the angels. Angels are pure good. They don't understand the idea of ma'asiyah and sin. They are comprised of light and they only do good. On the other side, we have shaitan, which is pure evil. There's no such thing as good. Everything is ma'asiyah. So you have two extremes. One is the angels and one is the Shaytan, in the middle is insan, humankind. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he gives this analogy. He says that humans are right in the middle. And depending on the desires, depending on the actions that people do, they move either right or they move left. So if you think of it on a scale, 100% of goodness is the angels. 0% of goodness is shaytan. Right in the middle is insan, 50%. Potential for good, potential for bad. The more good insan does, 51, 52, 53, 55, 60, 60, they're getting closer to the angels. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told one of the sahaba that if you are always doing good, what will happen? The angels will descend and they'll shake hands with you. Because that is the being and the state of the angels that they're constantly doing good. On the other hand, Allah describes the people who always do wrong. Hizbu shaytan The party of shaytan. Why? Because the more wrong you do, the more you go down. From 50, you go 49, 48, 45, 40, 35. And then the worst of the worst are those people who are in the party of shaytan. This analogy is very good for us to understand what we need to do in order to steer clear of the extremes and follow, well, we try to go towards the angels, we try to avoid the extreme of the shaitan. In this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that our desires on the spectrum, there are so many things naturally we desire as human beings. Each and every one of us here, we have certain desires, hawa, shahawat. Some people, they're very into cars. Some people, they need money. Some people, they're in food. Some people, they like aesthetics. Some people, they want a nice home. Some people, they want a good family. Some people want... People want and desire things. That's how we are as human beings. We are creatures built with desires. However, our desires can be tamed. Just like an animal can be tamed, our desires can be tamed. And when we tame that shahwa, that hawa, we need to make it go more towards the right, 55, 60, until we get near the status of the angels. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in an authentic hadith, he tells us, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به. Very powerful hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, everybody has natural desires, everybody has things that they want. But if you are a mu'min, you are a believer, your iman will never be perfect until that animal, you tame it, يَكُونُ تَبَعًا لِمَا جِئْتُ بِهِ And it follows the path and direction that I have brought. Meaning, I want money. Everybody wants money. I want food. Everybody wants food. I want a good family. But the decision that I make, where and how do I get my money? What do I eat? What, how do I raise my family? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, all your desires are fine. 
but make sure it is taba'an lima ji'tu bihi it is in accordance to what I have brought the sunnah of the Prophet and that is what we need to aim for you know what's beautiful here is Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't tell us remove your hawa remove your desires he did not say that because as humans we have desires a person has lust Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam says don't be involved in illicit relationships have a halal marriage you're hungry don't eat haram food eat halal Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam doesn't say starve or he doesn't say live the life of a celibate or he doesn't say live in the street no get a home make sure you do it lawfully Eat food, make sure it is lawful. Get a job, make sure it is a halal source of income. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, لا يؤمن, You don't have iman. Your iman is incomplete until your hawa, your desire, becomes subordinate. لما جئت به, the sunnah that I have brought. And I always want to bring the conversation back to the concept of fitra. Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. There is no conceivable option of someone who follows Islam and can say my life is very difficult. This is unconceiv- inconceivable in Islam that you say as a Muslim I cannot live my life. I feel like I'm being strangled. That is not Islam. Rather, when you feel like you're being strangled, it's because the lifestyle that we have chosen has made us so comfortable with wrong that when we're polishing our hawa and our nafs, it feels difficult. It feels hard. Imagine, you ever seen an infant goes and plays in the mud, comes back with mud filled over a child. This happens all the time. This happened recently with my own son. He goes in the back, he's playing in the mud, his clothes, his body, his face, his hands. I wonder what happened. He comes back in a pile of mud. We take him, we put him into the shower, and we're washing and scrubbing him. He's screaming. What are you doing to me? You're hurting me. It's hurting. Why do you have to scrub? No, leave me the way I am. That's how our nafs is. The more we get comfortable with haram, you know, we watch something haram. We listen to something haram. The first time, you know, subhanAllah, ask somebody who has never watched something haram, listen to something haram. They walk inside of Walmart or Kroger, they hear music in the back, they feel shocked. Like, I just came from a Muslim country, I've never experienced this. Speak to the same person a year down the line, comfortably, like nothing is wrong. We watch something haram, first time, everything is hush-hush, we feel very bad about it. Then we watch a second, a third, a fourth, and it becomes normal. And then we start scheduling, okay, when are we going to watch together as a family? We do something haram, we steal from people, we do ghiba, first time, we feel bad then it becomes natural. That's how the nafs is. The more we do something wrong, the more comfortable we get. And the process of cleaning that hawa is difficult. So following Islam is not difficult. But our nafs becomes so comfortable that replenishing and recovering from that becomes difficult for us. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith that Imam Nawawi himself says, it's not sahih, authentic hadith. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, لا يؤمن أحدكم You do not have iman. This is mubalagha, this is emphasis that you don't have iman, meaning your iman is not complete. Until what? يَكُونُ هَوَاهُ تَبَعًا لِمَا جِئْتُ بِهِ That your wants and desires are in line with the sharia. Again, I want to emphasize this point. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not saying until you remove your desires. No. Anything that you will find haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a halal alternative. Somebody has lust and desire, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, your spouse has the exact same thing. You find haram food, Allah has given us halal food. You want to listen to something haram, Allah has given us halal alternatives. You want to watch and do something for entertainment that is haram, Allah has given us alternative. But it takes time to get used to. It gets, takes time to get used to. So in summary, in conclusion, let's remember that grade, that spectrum. On the one side is the status of the angels. On the other side is the status of shaitan. And right in the middle, when we're born as insan, we're on 50. The more good we do, the closer we get to 100 and the angels. And the more wrong we do, the closer we get to shaitan. 
And every time we do something wrong, let's think about that grading system that I'm doing wrong. I think like it's not having an effect, but before I know it, I start getting closer to the wasawis. You know, some people, they complain, when I'm in salah, the haram that I see, it's playing in my mind. The music or whatever haram I listen to, it's playing in my ears. I've heard people who told me that they have a very bad habit of listening to music and they say, when we go to sleep, I cannot help but the lyrics are playing in my mind. I'm not listening to it, but it's just playing in the back. I wake up in the morning, the first thing, those lyrics are playing in my mind, even though I don't have my headphones on. Some people, they say they're driving, they have a habit of watching things that are inappropriate, and they say it's in, it's literally I'm seeing it. When I'm talking about inappropriate, things that are absolutely haram, some people, they told me that I need some help. I'm praying salah, and those nude images that I see at night, I see it in my salah as well. What can I do? I'm going in sajda, but my mind is playing tricks with me. I can't help but think about those haram things. Why would that happen? Because the more our nafs inclines towards shaitan, the stronger the grip. But the more we pull away, slowly those things will go away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who inch closer and closer towards the angels and make their hawa in accordance to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Jazakumullahu khairan wa assalamu alaykum.